For the first time in a year, the Bank of Canada's most recent announcement didn't include raising interest rates. Kat Eschner is our Ontario Hub's affordability journalist. She's been looking into how the bank makes decisions like that, and she joins us now. Hello, Kat. Hey, Jan. All right, so you recently visited the Bank of Canada in Ottawa. This was interesting because the bank's media person told you that normally people don't get access to do stories about the inner workings of a bank. My first question is, how'd you get access? So, to be fair to Paul Batterich, or the media, the bank's uh, director of media relations who I spoke with, I did ask him <laughs> if I would have been able to get this access, say, five years ago. And he was like, I mean, it, it wouldn't have been a priority. Um, mm -hmm. And when I contacted them initially, being like, I would like to come to the bank and I would like to meet your staff and learn about the process of making monetary policy, which it, you know basically is setting interest rates. Mm -hmm. He was very receptive and we managed to get something going and I actually went to the bank and spent two days reporting from the bank. So this is kind of cool, but interest rates only have the desired effect on inflation and we can only bring inflation down if people think we can. If people hmm. are expecting inflation will be about 2%, which is the Bank of Canada's right. target. If they're not convinced that's gonna uh, be true and they they sort of have this what someone else I spoke with called entrenched inflationary psychology where okay. they just think interest rates are good or um, where they just think um, inflation is going to be like 5% or higher for a long time. They behave as if that's true so they make decisions around how they spend money, how they say money as if it's true and it actually drives inflation. So recognizing this, like the bank has put a lot of work into new ways of communicating with Canadians to like reassure them and explain to them exactly what they're doing, how it will bring inflation down, and um, why, for example, having to hike interest rates um, to levels that are, that are frankly punishing for many Canadians, um, you know, why it's necessary, like why are we making you do all this? And, and they really want to help people understand why exactly it is that, and what it is they do and how exactly it works. So I think that's why they were like, yeah, please come, please, please meet our people. All right, with that being said, Hopefully in basic terms, because I know you have all the lingo now. Uh, in basic terms, what function of the bank were you there to learn about specifically? Yeah, so the Bank of Canada does a lot of stuff. Um, among other things, it creates all, it makes all of Canada's currency. So like all the bills you see, literally the Bank of Canada has a branch that just makes bills. Okay. Um, but what I was there to learn about is called monetary policy. It's basically the process of manipulating uh, the rate of inflation using a, a fairly simple series of tools, but the only big one is interest rates. All right. Monetary policy has been described as boring sometimes. <laughs> uh, it is also interesting to note that we don't live in boring times, obviously. We have sure. are in a global pandemic. We have wars raging on. What did you learn about how monetary policy is made with all of that noise sort of in the background? Right. So the big takeaway I had from my time at the bank is that A, it's full of nerds, but B, those are really smart nerds who spend a lot of time thinking about all of these different facets of the Canadian economy. I met a few of these, these, <laughs> don't kill me gentlemen, don't, don't be upset, but, but you're nerds. Um, I know, I'm one too, it takes one to know one. Um, they spend a lot of time thinking about everything from how the labor market uh, is more diverse than it used to be to um, like the different ways people have jobs are much more varied than they used to be when, for instance, Canada adopted inflation targeting, which is the system we use in 90, 1991. Right. Um, but they also like think about new ways to use data because they have a lot more data and a lot more information about, for example, Canadian households than they used to just because computers are amazing mm -hmm. and computers in 1991 and computers in 2023 are like basically you're talking about two completely different things in some right. ways. So they spend a lot of time thinking about how to understand the economy, how to transition it, and you know they're always kind of like retesting their hypotheses and ideas against other data, which I think has proved somewhat useful in these. I keep hearing the word unprecedented time. Like mm -hmm. I don't know if there there are precedents, unfortunately, right. but you know like the, these very chaotic times, um, and you know that that data is really something they rely on a lot. All right, let's talk about sort of these quote unquote nerds and sort of the various <laughs> departments. How, how did the various departments of the Bank of Canada actually work together to make a decision like, hey, you know, we are gonna raise interest rates or we're not gonna raise interest rates? Yeah. So this is actually really cool. Like, like follow me on this journey, <laughs> right. come inside the Bank of Canada with me. So um, leaving aside all of the parts of the Bank of Canada that have nothing to do with monetary policy that don't really like interact with setting interest rates, mm -hmm. who, who might, um, come in at some point, like maybe they have some need for one of those departments specifically, but in general, those departments are not involved. There are sort of four main departments that are involved with um, 
producing the data and you know the analysis that the governing Bank of Canada's governing council used to set the, uses to set the interest rate. There's um, one that looks at the financial stability of Canada's economy and is okay. always looking at like uh, threats and possible issues. I mean, you would be shocked to learn that housing and uh, and, and and Canadians' indebtedness is very high uh, on their list of concerns right, right now. Um, there's one that does modeling and projections uh, for, on the Canadian economy and sort of spends a lot of time just thinking about how the Canadian economy works from like a forward-going perspective. Okay. There's another one that just looks at financial markets and sort of studies how financial markets impact the Canadian economy and, and um, what they might do. And there's another one that looks at the international context. So they look at everything from how, um, you know, U.S. actions could affect Canada mm -hmm. to bigger geopolitical questions and all those things. So those four departments are all throughout um, every finance, fiscal quarter, so every three-month period. Um, they're always sort of like producing and retesting new information and thinking about uh, different things that could arise that would maybe need to be sort of foreseen in the interest rate uh, announcement. Um, and they produce all this data and then they're involved in this series of like eight meetings that I read about in my story mm -hmm. um, where they, they present like a first case sort of far out from the interest rate decision and from the, the release of the monetary policy report, which is the big thing that anchors the quarter. Um, they provide like, Context in this case A meeting, and then for two weeks they do all kinds of other things. And then there's a case there, there, there's a case B meeting. There's like a more closer to the decision meeting, and throughout that they're they're just like producing things and also responding to governing council requests for hmm. information and for um, uh, further analysis. Like for example, the governing council might be like, okay, well, can you tell us what might happen? If uh, the price of oil, I'm giving you a, a for example, this mm -hmm. is not something they told me about, but you know, if if the price of oil skyrockets. Suddenly, can you tell us what might happen if that's the case? Very interesting. Okay, something that you had talked about was sort of the role of computers, and I know when you were you were down there, you did spend a lot of time staring at some numbers and codes. And I'm curious, what is the role of computer modeling in setting interest rates? The Bank of Canada has has two main kind of models that the Canadian Economic Analysis Department uses to forecast and examine what might happen in the economy, okay. and they're called totem and lens. Totem and lens don't look like much. Like I saw both of these models. I, they, they are not exciting viewing, especially if you are, are not someone who understands uh, modeling very well, which I'm not. Um, but they use these two models in concert with a lot of other models and a lot of other information and something called judgment, where they sort of like think about um, what each model does, what each model can do, and um, how different variables within the models. So say the price of gasoline right. or the number of employed people or anything like that. Um, how changes in those models might affect the future. Okay. So it's a process of informed judgment and also like this really high tech, intricate, interesting computer mm -hmm. modeling exercise. Very interesting, good relationship there. All right, last question for you. Canadians are carrying a lot of debt. What did the Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem reveal to you about how he views his responsibility as Canadians sort of struggle through as they make ends meet? Right, so I, I met Tiff Macklin by accident. Um, I met him when he was going, like he was leaving for the day and he was coming out of an elevator somewhere near where I was at the time. And we had a brief conversation, um, which was, it, it's in my story, but it was it was a very brief interaction. And then I sent him this email following up being like, okay, so you, you, you're where the buck stops. You're, you're responsible for the governing council's decisions. And we know that, you know, Canadians are feeling the impact of higher interest rates, especially with higher inflation. How do you like think about your role here? And I received a response, which is attributable to Macklem. I received it from the press person, um, Paul, mm -hmm. who I'd been working with. And it sort of started by saying, you know, I realize things are hard for Canadians. I read a lot of letters. Um, I don't know when he reads them, but I read a lot of letters. And I can, I, like, I can tell, I hear about these hardships. Um, and the thing is, the Bank of Canada, so it gets its mandate via the Bank of Canada Act. It, it, its mandate sort of comes from the federal government. It's a bit complex, but... Um, they only have a few tools they can use to affect inflation, which we all agree is inflation right now is bad. Right. Things are not good, especially in, in essential categories mm -hmm. like food and shelter. Right. And those are hurting many people, but especially lower income Canadians and Canadians on a fixed income who can least afford to be hurt. You know, can least, they have the mm -hmm. least wiggle room. Um, and he sort of addressed all these points in his response to me. Um, and then kind of said, but, you know, we're determined to bring inflation down 
um, using the one tool that they have to do that, which is interest rates. Um, you know, and we're, we're going to keep doing whatever needs to be done to bring inflation down, even if that means raising interest rates, which impacts everyone, even the, like, there's more than a third of Canadians who don't own a home right. and, just the, and thus don't have a mortgage. We are also all impacted by mm -hmm. uh, interest rates to some degree or another. So um, I think the, the thing is that, like, he's gotten a lot of flack for decisions that have been made in the last year or two. Um, and I'm not going to comment on any of that specific mm -hmm. flack, but I do think it's worth knowing, and I do hope Canadians understand, Bank of Canada doesn't have a lot of tools, right. but they have this mandate, which is keeping inflation around 2%, so. low, stable inflation. And so they, they're going to use the tools they have to try and produce that outcome. Kat, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so Truly. much for so much, so much insight from Bank of Canada. <laughs> Thank you again. Thanks. Take care. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.